It is impossible for the atheist community to be apolitical. We fell into a well of talking about lol cows. Atheist content creation is one of the easiest bottom of the barrel content types to make. Atheist community conversation is in the same place that it was 10 years ago. It hasn't changed very much, at least 10 years ago. You know, the, the 2006 to 2012 dialogue is, has just gotten longer and it's increasing in its irrelevance as a result. Oh, oh, I have a spicy atheism video. All right. I might have told you about it a while ago, but it's spicy. I figure I should tell you I'm going to make it. All right. Oh, uh, it has a video of yours in it. I'm going to mention you. That's unfortunate. I'm going to call you out and <laughs> <laughs> lay out all the drama. No, I'm going to talk about your uh, religion is a mental illness video. I'm going to list it along with others who have done similar projects because um, the discourse in atheism around that subject is interesting. Dude, people What's your mad at me for that video. Really? Oh, yeah. I, but I it's mean, I'm the, not the, surprised, the but I guess I'm surprised. Like, like, your audience shouldn't get mad at you about that. The responses that I got from it were the, the, the fucking basic, like, well, what do you call a delusion? Like, I... I okay. Can you, can let's, you let's call talk. it that? <laughs> Guys, we're not, we're not shutting down for a second. I, we, need to, we need to suss some of this stuff out. So, like, wait. All right. We should talk about the atheist community just a little bit, just because you're here. We're chilling. Okay. What... What's your beat on all of it? Because I know you kind of, you moved your content a different direction so, and everything like that. So like, what, here's my how beat. are you? And, yeah, yeah, go for it. Let There's, me take. I, the, the friends of mine who are in the atheist community, and I yeah. still consider myself part of it. Right. Um, I, I sort of am too-ish. Like, yeah. I, I, when I, uh, I did a poll of my audience, I'm sorry, interrupting you, but like, I, I think I kind of agree with you on this, that, uh, more than half of my audience is polytheist now on YouTube. Mm. But um, there is a solid, like, let me let me check the poll, actually. I also have to hop off in about two minutes. Oh, shit. Well, then go ahead and fucking finish what you were saying. Um, like, a sizable portion is still atheist, like, somewhere below, somewhere around 15 to 20%. Yeah. And it's definitely going to be higher in mine, I'm certain. Right, um, right. But, so my, my beat is this. It is impossible for the atheist community to be apolitical. It yeah. tries so desperately hard to. And I remember specifically uh, Drew saying that like when atheism got political, uh, that's when things went awry. Uh, and I, I disagree with that take. I disagree I do too. with it. I because do too. it's not when atheism got political, that's when the anti-SJW thing happened. Right. It's not when... Atheism got political. Atheism it's, got political with like Sargon or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's like it, atheism. Then. Atheism was always political. It's that, just where it aimed its guns. That might be what Drew means, though. Is is when it got political at that point because it got it got right. political early on, but it it got. I mean, I don't know. I, it always has been political. Drew was a good enough wordsmith to word that better. Hitchens was political. Yes. So, and that, like, you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of anti-theism came out of a response to 9-11 with Islamophobia and all of that stuff. That's where a lot of it kind of has its, its seeds or roots or whatever, right? That's where you get your, your four horsemen at the right. Uh, the they're beginning. all like responding to their Islamophobia in a certain way, you know? Right. So my my take on the atheism, uh, atheist community right now mm -hmm. is this. We are in a weird spot where there are more atheist content creators uh, than there are Christian ones on the platform now. Right. But the Christian content creators, by and large, with very few exception, they're united. are big. They're bigger too. oh okay i see they're yeah, yeah, yeah. massive 
Mike Winger, have you seen how big he is now? Yeah, he's got like, what, 200, 300,000 subs? Something it's like, like 500,000 now, I thought. Really? Hold on a minute. Let me see. 400. 414K. Reality heard our disagreement and made a... Made a compromise. Yeah, made a compromise. Um, because we're so, both right. It's just, you know... Even though he doesn't get, you know, a... he Well, he gets a respectable amount of views on each video, too. Oh, he does. Yeah, like, is is the thing. We may have more, uh, more atheist content creators. The problem we have is that so many of us, and me included, I run into this problem too, we fell into a well of talking about lol cows. Mm -hmm. Atheist content creation is one of the easiest bottom-of-the-barrel content types to make. And I'm not saying that to disparage uh, atheist content atheist creators content. Right, who, I'm, right, right. who I'm friends with. There was because a... When I when I think about like uh like, about like the flat Engineer, earth Shannon, grind and all that kind of yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm thinking about like Godless Engineer, Shannon Q, Vice Rhino, these are intelligent people who articulate their points very well. Mm -hmm. The Prophet of Zod, like these are these are exceptions to that rule, but these are also the ones that have been making it. When I think about most atheist content creation, yeah. we have a standalone avatar uh that is saying variations on the phrase God not real. Right. And the only the only atheist content creator I can think of that can do the God not real shtick and just do that without backing it up with like a lot of hard logic is Sir Sick. And that's because when Sir Sick does it, he's also nightmarishly fucking funny when he does it. So you're just, he's just Sir doing Sick. the he's just doing the God not real thing. How do I know but who Sir Sick is? Uh that's a good question. Um, but when he's when he's doing his thing, he is injecting so much comedy and humor to what he's doing, and it's not like absurdist comedy, uh, like what you got a lot with uh, the, with TJ, the Amazing Atheist. Um, but even TJ is doing pretty well. But TJ ended up moving into political stuff. A lot of atheist content creators rely very heavily on the oh, idea of the law cow. Before the person that they can hit repeatedly and everybody's going to come and watch the Greg locks, the Kent Hovens. Right. Um, as a result, I'm going to be honest. I think a lot of atheist content creators get very lazy because it's very easy. And I've seen, I see this in my comment section too, when people are just like, people watch well, it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it gets a lot of views and yeah, but there's only so much of it you can but watch it, before it's the same fucking thing. Before you right? before you've watched every argument, right? Like the notable exceptions, I, I noted a bunch of them. There's also Apologia. Like, but when I'm watching Apologia, I'm not just getting God not real. I'm also getting somebody who's going into the hermeneutics of of scripture. Yeah, and yeah. and actually Paul, like Paul breaking makes, stuff down. Paul Shannon too, but I think that both of them wind up kind of coming at things from their angle and, and dissecting things a little bit. Right. I think that there's a, there's a lot of like um, philosophy apologist types that complain about Paul. And I think that their, their complaints are misguided. Um, Paul goes after like a certain kind of Christian and is it the most best, whatever? No, no, but it doesn't but, have to be because right. it's a common denominator that you find with most Christians. He's in the talking. South. He's doing the thing where he's talking about the Christians that are by and large the more influential ones, and that's his standard, and that's a good standard, I think. I think that yeah. if more atheist creators content farmed some of the larger Christian creators, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I see a lot of venting about Cameron Bertuzzi. I don't see a lot of going after him. I, um, same with uh, uh, Mike Winger and um, a, a number of others. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like if you want to push back against the influence of Christian YouTube, then fuck Greg Locke. Go after the ones that are influential, like Paul is doing. Uh, you know, stop complaining about Paul, about Apologia, and uh, do your own thing that is going after some of the more influential Christian creators, such as Mike Winger or what do you mean, or these others, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or Bertuzzi, you know what I mean? Um, like if you're going to do responses, go ahead and do responses. But I see so much whinging over um, the, the bottom of the barrel or very, very small Christian creators that yell about atheism every once in a while. Yeah. You know? and, and again, this is a thing I'm guilty of as well, because I, make seven videos a week so every now and again i'm just like well 
that's the bottom. I'll just... There's a little bit. Go after uh, Mike Winger every once in a while. Fuck. We, like, passed him around like a doobie in a, uh, a debate one time. Like, we can... You want to? You should go after him. <laughs> I know you can do it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Anyway, my 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 point is, when it comes to the state of the atheist community, we've got a lot of people who do that, mm-hmm. and we need more people. I, I know I just disparaged him for his wordsmithing earlier, but we need more people like Drew, who yes, are of course. Who are actually not just doing the God not real, but they're going, well, here's my angle. Here's what I'm doing. Because when Drew's something, he's, he's, I hate to use the word pleading, but his videos very much feel like he's pleading with you to come to his conclusion. <laughs> right. But that <laughs> makes them very sincere. No, it's true. He is very sincere. Like yeah. he, he, he's, he comes off very genuine and he's like, this is what um, I went through. Here you go. Here's all the stuff. This is what happened. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and it's, and what it's you, a good format. It's a really good format. what you get with that is you get an individual mm-hmm. who you can think about. When you think of Drew, you can think about a bunch of lived experiences that he had. Like when I think of Drew, outside of the conversations we have, I think of his stories about being a camp counselor. Right. Like that's the stuff that comes up into the forefront of my mind. But when we're talking about a lot of atheist content creation on YouTube, and this has been the case for a long time, we're talking about carbon cutout people who are using the same arguments that are recycled. Let's go and face it, mostly from Dillahunty. Um, they're using the same arguments, recycled the same ways, and they're doing it over and over again ad nauseum. And I can't give you a bit of information about what any of these individuals are, merely that they do content on flat earth they do content on kent hovind they argue against things right but content creators are not just mouths to speak against things it's interesting that like a lot of atheist content creators are stuck in the same loop that has existed probably since well i guess they're emulating thunderfoot and aaron raw right like they're emulating what has been successful before but it's very old hat like that conversation has been had already. As far as YouTube is concerned, the creationists are kind of done. There's not any creationist, like large YouTube channels that I can think of beyond what Paul actively deals with, right? So yeah. Paul Gia has got that covered and he's got that covered in a way that they're very, very annoyed with him. So that's fine, right? What I, th- I think that in order to, if it, it's funny that like the rational atheists aren't doing this um but they need to rationally look at what's out there what's doing successful and figure out ways in order to counter that problem is it's not it, it, they can't use a lot of their like buzz positions in order to combat like what mike winger is doing right now well no you, know? you can't you can't meme mike winger it's not going to work. no no mike when i the the earliest thing he's I did a on more mike, like lifestyle feely sort of character and and going after that in a way that is unempathetic isn't going to work and a lot of the atheist community is not very good at engaging in a conversation in a way that is empathetic which makes drew a good exception you know like that's why he's successful is because he can do that a lot of atheists don't i'm not sure if they can't but they don't you know what i mean yeah and i think a lot of it comes down to the fact that if this is there doesn't feel like there's a need to emulate because if I if I'm if I'm speaking from what atheist content creation was for me when I started, mm-hmm. it was a way to vent. Yeah, in the beginning it was a way to vent. Yeah. It was I had these issues uh, with Christianity specifically, but in my brain it was all religion all the time because you know I had just read God Delusion and that was sure. what was said. Um, but so my complaints were levied out at religion on the whole and I was venting against that and getting angry at all of that that happened and I was speaking out against it uh, in in retaliation right but here's the thing all for the most part all atheists uh, here in the United States we're all retaliating against the same thing Mm. so there's only so many times you can hear one person's vent session uh, before you're like, hey, there's some commonalities here. I, I'm starting to not be able to distinguish 
uh, these creators because they are all responding to the same things. And yeah, it's because we were all influenced by the same things, but that's not the the problems of the 90s are not the problems of now. Like, I'll every now and again, I'll do a video like I did with Prophet of Zod, where we'll respond to a, a 90s era guy screaming about Pokemon and how demonic it is. Yeah, people, they aren't doing that anymore. <laughs> but that's, they might yeah, that's be, but they are. Not, they're doing it's, it's not it's not what's effective. It's not what's getting a lot of views on YouTube right now. No, now maybe it's it is in some about, circles, but, Yeah, now it's Christians talking about abortion. Now right. it's Christians talking about gay rights. Now it's 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 a lot of that. Like or just talking about family. Like there's a lot Christianity is a pretty broad. Here's another thing actually that I was just thinking about um while you were talking a second ago which is does like atheist content seems to have a situation in which it it has this crutch of needing to be based in having and being response videos right there needs to be somebody that they're criticizing otherwise you know atheism kind of on its own doesn't because you know, like, think of the the uh, successful atheist channels you look at apologia right all of his stuff is critic is criticism and yeah. it's fine. It's just it's the nature of what it is. Drew, similar sort of thing. A lot of what he's talking about is criticism. Um, that that as an atheist you're engaging with something. Uh, atheism itself, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get real nerdy here on you here for a second. That I was when I was reading Plutarch on when he was talking about atheists in the Roman Empire. One of the things that he observed about them is that they are people who scoff at a culture. And even at that point, the atheists that existed then were being critical, right? But they weren't stand they weren't like building a culture of their own necessarily. They were just scoffing at culture. They were the counterculture. Right. Is but but in a scoffing way. Counterculture often you can say countercultural movements have a culture of their own, like the punk movement, for example, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, atheist culture we have fedoras somewhat intangible you know um <laughs> we we have fedoras stop yeah. but the lar the larger point that it it seems like you're getting at is that atheism ex has to exist on youtube in an almost symbiotic maybe sometimes parasitic way right right and that's not a good thing no not not if you're wanting to build something that is able to stand on its own. Yeah. Right. Because if you, it, you know, and this is something that somebody pointed out to me in the debate scene some time ago where he was saying that like one of the, he was talking about like how I debate with atheists and he was saying that what I was doing was more interesting because I'm standing uh, for something and that it's much harder to, come up with a position and defend it than it is to try and tear something down. Tear something down is easy. Building something is hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, if if you're in a debate and you're defending a position, you have to be the better debater than the person who is trying to tear you down. Because the person who's trying to tear you down can be really shit but still get a few good shots in. Right? Because they just ask the right question somewhere. You know what I mean? It's really easy to try and undermine something. It's hard to defend something. So atheism is kind of built upon that. Like when it gets into atheist con when you get into atheist content, right? It's kind of built upon it is easy to tear something down. And that feeds into what you were talking about with respect to the whole bottom of the barrel thing. Um that you wind up kind of finding the easiest thing to tear down, so you tear it down. And if you can tear down the bottom of the barrel stuff really well that's cool but even as you're advancing like in your content as an atheist you're still tearing shit down because you're, it doesn't really defend a position the, even yeah. like the meme among atheists is like i simply lack a belief of god don't make me defend something um that's why there was a, a video that i responded to recently that i actually had a little more fun with because of that mm -hmm. uh where the 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 concept of the video i was responding to is him saying what does atheism offer right what um uh, it's a good question you know, and, and a lot of atheists yeah. would say it's th that's not asking a question that is relevant, but I, th I think it is. There's a there's plenty of ways. To, there's so many interesting ways to engage with that conversation, though. Mm -hmm. It's very much like, hey, there are some people that actually find comfort in the idea that there is finality to life, and within right. atheism, there is no clear answer 
about the end of life. And for those people, the idea of there being a finality is far more comforting than the idea of there being an afterlife for them. Atheism can offer that because it simply doesn't have an answer for what is or is not there you know when the when the great beyond hits also atheism can exist very easily as a foundation to build upon looking at it as the actual sticks and stones um is maybe missing the point if you have a group of people who are atheistic there's a billion and 12 ways that they can move from that foundation whereas if you are stuck within the the bones of christianity there's only so many ways you can float there before you become heretical right existing right. as a a more fluid foundation you can't be a heretical is, atheist until you're no longer an atheist right yeah right. It, like yeah. like existing as a fluid well that's foundation actually that's not true is it depends on the culture feature. but yeah like that's a that is a that is a feature that you find within atheism that can function because it can operate not as the bones and the sticks of an operation but as a foundation to build anything you want on and finding answers like that i think is far more interesting than just doing the whole dirt god not real irrelevant like yeah sure it's well, irrelevant that, that, but that's when you asked. i think that as soon as you start looking into that scaffolding and finding out what you are that's going to be a question that's in addition to being an atheist rather than because you're an atheist or as a result of atheism or something like that i think that this is this is part of why I mean, I don't, I don't know that this is part of why, but I, it, my intuition is that this is why you get a lot of pagans that are ex-atheists, is that they're in atheism for a while, and then they're like, well, what now? Well, I guess I'll just start exploring again. And uh, sometimes they wind up in some sort of like atheistic philosophy of some sort, and sometimes they wind up as a polytheist. Uh, because it's like, well, Christianity didn't fucking work out. Let me take a look at some other things. I've left that. Which I'm an is- atheist now. Let's take a look around. Which is um, literally the, this is a foundation you can build anything you want on. Right, with polytheism, like it, it, yeah, it's it's very um, flexible, you know. And that's and that's kind of one of those things where, like, I, I find those kind of things interesting to talk about because there's a lot of, personally, and, and maybe it's, it's not unexplored territory philosophically because, I mean, you can go and find some random asshole who's written about this 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. You always can. Um... But I think that those types of questions are way more fun to engage with than to just go, well, that's irrelevant. Like, right. right. I, and that's kind of a criticism I actually had on my videos a long time ago. Um, You're talking about the what does atheism offer question, right? Like that's that. Yeah. And like really any question like that, that je- that ends up with the uh we're like, as the atheist, you're kind of coded to do the, the default. That's not relevant response. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those questions are super fun to engage with. And that's one of the criticisms I got on earlier videos of mine when I would do the like responding to 10 questions for atheist things um, is that I would engage with those questions like wholeheartedly. And then somebody would come to my comment section and they're like, well, the the better answer would have just been to say that it has nothing to do with anything. And I was like, yeah, we could accept that. And then Uh, we can have fun. (laughs) Hey, uh, asking for relevance is a common like tactic i guess among atheists i the um i i found one of the things that actually i find it when i go into like atheist spaces and do a debate right Mm -hmm. one of the things that uh and i didn't i didn't realize this until now thinking about it one of the things that makes it easy for me is that it, it it it's a comfort zone and the reason why it's a comfort zone is it doesn't change very much the atheist set of arguments what conversations they generally have the reason why you can if you're a a polytheist debater or whatever the fuck like i am right you can just poke into an atheist space as as the debate kind of thing and the conversations that they're having are largely like predictable set of conversations and the ways that you can cut in the ways that you can kind of like uh gadfly or uh, bring in objections or, or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of those things are like standards because they've been having the same conversations for the past 20 years at least. You don't see a lot of right? innovation on no, that. No, none, arguably. Like even, even as there's innovation like in atheist philosophy, right? Which is a wholly different conversation than atheist community conversation. 
atheist community conversation is in the same place that it was 10 years ago. It hasn't changed very much, at least 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the 2006 to 2012 dialogue is has just gotten longer and it's increasing in its irrelevance as a result. And every time someone tries to talk about trying to build something within it or talk about something new, uh, American Atheist, there was a presentation there about white supremacy and atheism and it got fucking maligned by the internet. I'm sure you saw that, right? Um, but uh, it's like, well, no, this isn't what atheism is talking about. Atheism is simply a lack of belief in gods. It's not talking about anti-racism. Oh, okay. What? So but the communities that we foster wind up ha losing these standards as a result, right? You know what I like, mean? And, and that kind of goes into the other, the, the double-edged sword of the whole atheism can be a foundation upon, you know, you upon which you can build anything. Right. Like... You can That's build a hateful foundation. You can. Yeah. It's very easy to get to 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 fall into an ideology like that. Um and like it's for instance, there's a there's a very easy pipeline. It, there's not a difficult pipeline to go from atheism into anti Semitism. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. All it takes oh, I've seen it, yeah. I yeah, all it all it takes is for the the atheist in that position disparage the Old Testament as much as possible and then anything that resulted from it. Is that where you kind of... Well, uh, I was going to say all it takes is for them to look at Jewish people as all Zionists. Which is the same thing that happens oh, when see. you look when you look at all Muslims as, you know, jihadists. The caliphate like, or whatever, right. Yeah, when you yeah. when you do that, you find yourself in that bubble where you're, able, you're willing to justify anything uh, to eradicate that religion, and now suddenly you... Well, we saw that pipeline, I guess, right? With Hitchens. Kind of, like, essentializing Islam as... Mm -hmm. uh, like, Islamism or whatever the fuck, right? You know what I mean? Like, he, he took radical Islam, essentialized Islam as that. Dawkins did the same thing. Dawkins and, uh, arguably did it more. Right, right. Um, but like Hitchens made political arguments about who to go to war with, with it, utilizing it. Uh, Dawkins, I don't recall doing that, but he may have. Um, but you know, you take that same structure and you just uh, apply it to Zionism, and there you go. Right? It's a, it winds up being just a different form of the same thing that may have right. different political alignments beyond that, but is the same thing. As a result, and it winds up just a found, again, as you were talking about, a, found, a hateful foundation because you can go anywhere with it. It's um, a reason why I have to clarify in any video that I do where I'm criticizing, you know, like Christianity now. I literally have to go. There are Christians who came to their beliefs rationally. There are Christians who are not hateful and will not try to destroy uh, minority groups. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I, it, when I do that, there's always somebody in the comment section. Well, actually, organized religion is the most evil thing in the entire world right, because right, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And I'm like, you are taking... This is just an argument against government. That is just an argument against government. That is all that is. Uh, I've actually made a similar conversation where it's like a lot of the criticisms that people say religion bad can also apply it if you just want to say uh, politics bad. Right. Yeah, it's all the same nuts and bolts are there. Right. You say organized religion uh, controls people, so on, gets you in line, and all that kind of crap. It's like, okay, congratulations, is, you just described the law. Right. You just what? Even worse. Right. What saying that religion is bad because um, fundamentalist Christianity, right, is trying to say that we should stop engaging in politics because of fascism existing. Mm -hmm. Right. That because fascism exists, this means we need to abandon all political conversations as a result. And that is silly, right? So when you when you make that argument with Christianity, it, it winds up being equally silly because you're just like, because of my criticisms of Christianity, we need to we, we need to stop engaging in this huge variety of ideas and traditions, some of which are incredibly fulfilling. This is, when it comes, this is a really dumb take. It's just a ridiculous it, take. It always ends up relying on the exact same arguments where somebody has to go... They, they have to simultaneously use the slippery slope fallacy as an argument against people, mm -hmm. and then, which I, which I agree with, and then go, um, you know, if somebody has incorrect beliefs, then they are bound to make 
uh, bad decisions on those beliefs because beliefs form actions. I'm like, okay, cool. I agree with the spirit of what you're saying, but the way you've said it is the slippery slope fallacy. Hmm. The way you've said it is person believes in God. Uh, therefore, they might shoot a child one day. That's the, yeah, I, I call that um, homeowners association atheism. That's my personal nickname for it. It's like, it's we have to have things regulated and safe no risky behavior whatsoever kind of thing and uh so if you if you have like a position if, if you engage in a spirituality or something like that their objection to it is because maybe maybe you might possibly have some conclusion which is the same thing of like well if you engage in political discourse you might become a fascist Right. If you if you are an atheist, you might end up becoming an Islamophobe or an or you know an anti-Semite. Like it's it's right. right. But they're going to say that the the guardrails aren't in place in the same way that religion is, and that's a, that can be a fair point. But also, the socio-cultural dynamics within atheism kind of does a stand-in, so that, doesn't it? Like it it you people wind up kind of being pushed into these sort of atheist orthodoxy positions because um, they don't have anything but a foundation and there are no sticks and stones to build on except the foundation people end up going pl to places that are already built and as they are avoiding the religious areas that are already built they start uh, finding no, other a little bit different actually because what okay. i'm saying is that like when when people jump into the atheist community there is a scaffolding that is there like you talk about the foundation, right? They argue for the foundation, but upon the foundation within the atheist community has been built a set of scaffolding that uh, is like proselytory and attacks religions and so on. So you get like basically the uh, Dillahunty clone mm -hmm. thing that shows up or the Hitchens clone or the Dawkins clone. You know what I mean? Like people take one of the four horsemen or a popular sort of character within atheism and emulate them in their aggression and that becomes the culture of atheism as a result and if you're if you're engaging in the atheist community and you uh object to this behavior well now you're defending religion or something like that right like the 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 orthodoxy of the scaffolding that is there starts pushing you toward no 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 no, no. this behavior is acceptable it always has been and if you complain about it then uh you're not you're on the wrong side or something like that right it exists um but you know while i agree with you on this on the you can build anything in any other direction there is like a first story that is sitting there if that makes sense mm -hmm. i just ranted <laughs> i mean it's fine your channel like i uh, so I agree, and that's why you end up like for, for me, my journey ended up being that emulation, and then having to deconstruct that emulation and build something that I preferred. I liked having deep philosophical yeah. conversations. I liked engaging but in you the nitty gritty back things through it, right? Yes, through that deconstruction. Because as I started deconstructing your atheism, we need to talk to John <laughs> Steingart about that. Uh, <laughs> um. But as I as I sat there and went, okay, instead of using, you know, the Dilla Hunty persona or the like I was an amalgamation of like Holy Kool-Aid, Godless Cranium, and and GMS, um, and Vice Rhino. Right. Like taking taking that amalgamation, stripping it away and going, Okay, but what am I? Yeah. as opposed to emulating these things. What do you, I care about? And what I what I ended up getting to was like I like sitting here and having the talk. Whatever the talk is, mm -hmm. I like having it and 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 defaulting into the hey, you know, this thing is not relevant thing. That's not what I like to do. I like to sit here and go, let's engage the hypothetical. Let's take it to its logical conclusion. Let's write a whole fucking story about it. I don't care. I'm here to do that. That part's fun to me. Right. Right.